Hey everyone, Professor Z here. Today we're talking about the Canon XA20 and XA40. They're basically the same camera. The XA40 is just the newer model. It shoots 4K, which the XA20 doesn't, but everything else about it, the functionality, where the ports are, all that stuff is primarily the same, especially what's inside the kits here at Sacred Heart. So I'm only gonna focus on one camera. I'm not gonna open up both kits. You also notice on the newer models, the XA40s, there's a little parts list on the top here that shows you everything that should be in this kit when you return it to the equipment room. Please check that every time to make sure everything's there. Okay, let's go ahead and open one up. Okay, here we have Canon XA20 right here. When we open up this kit, we have a lot of good stuff in here. And this is a nicely packed kit. We have all our microphone accessories right here, our lavalier, our handheld, and our shotgun mic are all on the bottom here. We have our mic cable and our charging cable right here at the top. It's also our DC cable, so we can use it while it's live as well. And we have our camera over here on its side with the shotgun mount on the little divider pad here. This is a good spot for it so it doesn't get broken. It's a great thing to have there. So let's look at everything individually. We're gonna go to the camera first. So here it is, your main shooter, the XA20 camera. First, let's talk about the battery. There's a little slide lock here that releases it. Here's the contacts on the battery. They go in the top, you just push and slide in. When you hear the click, you know it's locked in place. You also have your quarter 20 tripod mount on the bottom and your guide mount. So if you're using a quick release plate, there's always a little extra nub that goes in here to so make sure it's straight. Uh, most tripods we have here don't have that. You're just gonna use the quarter 20 knob right there. Now in order to charge these cameras before you use them, and I recommend you know signing a camera out the night before so that way you can charge it overnight, make sure your batteries are ready to go the next day. Don't come and expect the batteries to be charged five minutes before a shoot, unless you own your own camera and you have your cameras charged all the time. On the right side of the camera here, there's a little cover here. And you'll see there says DC, and also this has an AV out. So the DC in, this is where we charge our camera. So you lift this up here, and you have two ports. One is the yellow one, that's our AV out. We're not worried about that. There's another black port right here. This is where we're gonna plug the DC cable into. We're gonna get the DC cable in a moment. Plug it in here and make sure your camera is set to off. And then you'll see back here, the power slash charge light will be red. That indicates it's charging. If it's not red and your camera's on, the battery is not gonna charge because it can either, the, the power can either charge the battery or it can run the camera. It cannot do both at the same time. Staying on the right side of the camera here, we have our mic inputs. So we have mic one, mic two, or input one, input two, and the shotgun mount. Now to mount the shotgun on here, we're gonna unscrew this, flip it open, lay in your microphone, and you'll notice some of the microphones in the kits have actual tape around this part, that's so that way it fills in the gap, because this one's not taped yet, you can see it's a little loose, and I don't like that, so I put, usually put a little tape on there to fill that in, and now I'm gonna plug in this in to one of the two inputs. Input one, input two, it doesn't matter. It's your preference. The one thing that's gonna matter is on the other side of the camera here. The other side here, you have the controls for the mic. So with the shotgun microphone and in line one here, or input one, I need to make sure that this switch right here is at mic plus 48 volts. That means phantom power. Anything in a shotgun mic like this or the lavalier mics in the kit need power, so you need to make sure it's plus 48. To be safe, you can just leave that as plus 48 all the time. And also you have to make sure that the handle is turned on. If this is in the off position, it's gonna be using the internal microphones on the camera and not anything you plugged in up here. So if you're using microphones that you've plugged in, this has to be on. If you're just using the internal microphones, because maybe you're just shooting B-roll, this has to be off or else your audio is not gonna work right. Then up here, each channel has a volume control or an input control. So auto, manual, if it's an auto, you don't have to worry about this knob at all. You're not gonna be adjusting the volume. If it's on manual, this is your input sensitivity. Now it really depends on what I'm doing and how I'm gonna use this, usually with a shotgun in a loud situation, recording a basketball game or a concert or something. I tend to leave it on auto because it does a really good job of compressing it and I can't adjust it fast enough for loud situations. If I'm recording an interview with someone plugged in on a lavalier mic, I probably want that on manual so I can make sure I set the settings I want to set. Now on the front of the camera here, we have a lens hood already on the camera. Now this does twist off and you just expose the lens here, but we keep these on because they don't have lens caps when you have the lens hoods on. But you see it does protect the lens here. This is a little lens cap built into it. On the side here, there's a little flick switch. 
that opens that up. Make sure when you're not using the camera and when you're putting it away, this is closed. It protects the lens. Unprotected, protected. Please protect the lenses. Top of the camera, aside from the shotgun mount, we also have another shoe mount here so you can put a light attachment here, another shotgun mic, something like that. It's a universal mount. You can do a lot of things with that. We also have zoom control right here on the handle and a record button as well. So if you're using in this situation because you're doing low angle stuff, you can always do the zoom and record functions with your thumb here on the handle. Now, the other side of the camera. First of all, let's talk about the power button and the settings button. So on the right side here, first of all, you do have rocker controls for your zoom control, zoom in, zoom out. And then you have a settings control right here, Auto M Cinema. Do not use auto. We're not using auto around here. I usually leave it in M for manual. I don't really touch the cinema one too much, so M is probably where it's gonna be most of the time. On this side, we have a three-way switch as well, off, camera, media. Off is where, of course, where you leave it when you're not using it. Camera is when you wanna use it to record things, and media is when you want to look at the media that you've already recorded to preview and review your footage. Your screen just flips out like this. Flick at the camera on, give it a moment. As long as the battery's charged, it'll start turning on. Right now, there's no card inserted, so it's warming that there's no card. So this entire screen is a touch screen. So I can navigate the menu using my fingers here. I'm not gonna go into the menu settings in this video, that'll be a different one. But you can navigate and do a lot of things with your fingers. Also, if you're already operating the camera and you don't wanna take it off your hand, there's a little thumb control joystick here next to the record button. So here's your record button on the back. Next to it is a little joystick that you can navigate through the menu with, which is really handy while you're using the camera. Right here is where your SD cards go. It's a little door that flips up. Inside here you can put two different cards, card A, card B. Why two? Because the camera gives you a couple options. You could have two smaller cards and one, one fills up, it automatically starts recording the next one. So if you're doing a long event or something, you're not worried about it running out of space. If you're doing something important, you can have dual record where it records to both cards at the same time. That way if one card fails, the other card is still good. These are different options in the menu settings that you'd have to change based on what you want to do. Once your card is in, you flick it down, close the, close the door or else it won't function. If it's still open, it's not gonna let you do anything. To the right of that, one important button I wanna point out is the display button. When you press that, that's gonna to toggle through different display settings for your LCD screen. So if you wanna see just your rule thirds overlay, or if you wanna see nothing, or if you wanna see all the information about record time and volume and all that stuff, that's how you toggle through all that. Now this screen doesn't just flip out, it also rotates upwards. So if you're low angle, you can look up. It also does a whole 180 so you can do a selfie, and it even flips backwards like this. So if you're doing interviews, you can have it open on the side while you are operating your interview as a one-man band. Just remember when you are done, take it out, rotate it back where it came from, and leave it closed. Don't ever force it in position. If it feels like it doesn't want to go, that's because you will break it. Once you are done, please turn it off, make sure your lens cap is closed, and put it back in the case. Now let's take a look at everything else. So every kit has a shotgun mic little windscreen on the shotgun mics. This just helps protect from incidental wind. It's not gonna help with high wind, but it does help with windy situations. Keep that on there at all times. It's always good practice. And it plugs into one of your two inputs on the side of the camera. Inside this case is this lavalier mic. It has an XLR connection to plug it into the camera with the XLR cable that's included in the kit. The microphone has a little lapel clip on it so you can clip it to people's shirts. And there is a switch on the side. It does require you to have it in the on position. If it's in off, it's not gonna work. This actually does have a compartment for a battery, although the battery is not needed if you have the phantom power running on the camera. So I always just use the phantom power from the camera to power this microphone. When done, please put it back in the case with the cable nicely wrapped and zip it up. Each kit also has a condenser microphone, a little toggle switch for on off. If you have one of those, make sure it's in the on position or else it doesn't work. Again, XLR connection to the camera with the included cable. 
This is great for man of the street interviews and things like that. Now I firmly believe that everyone should own their own headphones, but if you don't, the kits do come with these Sony headphones. They have a short cable. I really like these. What's nice is they fold back up into themselves, save a lot of space inside the cases. Each kit will have an XLR cable. This again is used for plugging in either your condenser microphone or your lavalier microphone. And last but not least, two parts here, the DC charger and power supply and the AC cable that goes with it. This does plug into each other because they are replaceable parts. Plug in like that. This end of course goes into the wall and this end, oh, there it is, goes into the camera. Use this to charge your camera the night before a shoot and you'll be all set. So that's the brief overview of what's inside this kit. I'm gonna be making another video shortly about how to go through the menu structure and do the settings for the camera, setting the time, setting the format that you want to record in, et cetera. That's gonna be in another video coming soon, so stay tuned for that one. One other thing I wanna say is, if you ever are using one of these and you find that something is broken, you break it by accident, let us know. Don't just return the camera and not tell anyone something is wrong with it, because then it's just gonna get sent that back out again, someone else is gonna get a broken camera, and the cycle is gonna continue. We understand that sometimes things break, things like this, like where there's rubber at the top here, this eventually will break anyways, because that's just the nature of some of these pieces of equipment. We do send these into Canon for maintenance when they do need it, so please let us know if something's not functioning correctly, if a battery's not charging, etc. whatever it is, how big or small it is, doesn't matter to me, I just need to know about it, so that way we can address the issue and fix these cameras. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more tutorials coming soon. Like I said, we're gonna be doing one about the uh, menu structure very shortly in the series. Thanks for watching.